For many years, typography was only done in Photoshop for special effects. Today, many people use Photoshop to do mock-ups for websites or devices and for special effects but the typography features in Photoshop have gotten far more robust over the last several versions. Now I'm going to hit Command Plus or Control Plus to zoom into this web page mockup. And what we're going to be doing is adding a navigation bar text to the top of this image. If you want to see where the final version will go, I'll zoom in and we'll take a look at what the mock-up is intended to look like. Now you won't have all of the fonts that are saved in this static image, so we're going to use fonts that ship with the Creative Suite. So I'll come back to our Begin file, and I'll hit the letter T to go to the Type tool, or click once on T. I'll click above the photo, and we're going to type in the word Products. And it does help to zoom in quite a bit. I hit Command Plus or Control Plus. This is a large web page that will be scrolling and hopefully responsive in the end. But this is just for client approval. So when products is placed, I'll double click on the word products and I might want to make the font a little larger. So I could go to the options bar across the top and try 14 or 18. Or if I want a size in between, I could double click on the 18 and type 15. I could also use the two T's that are known as scrubby sliders to scrub up or down to nudge the type bigger and smaller. I think I'll land on 15 for this. Now in this document, I also have swatches that are corporate identity or branding colors. So what I'd like to do is pull out those swatches and start applying. Photoshop will give you the ability to load swatches, but only once you're finished editing. When you're in text edit mode, you'll notice many of your menus are grayed out. The panel menu for swatches, which is normally behind color, is also grayed out. So before we load those swatches, let me go to the right and I want to show you something called anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is especially helpful when you have type against a solid background because it will blend. Most web images are at only 72 pixels per inch. And if you did black to white, you might see jagged or stair-stepped quality on the images. Anti-aliasing gives you shades in between the black and the white, so it helps blend so the text looks cleaner. Now I'm at 200%, and ideally, if this is a web mock-up, it would help to view at 100%. Command-1 or Control-1 will get you there. So that's actual size. That will vary depending on your screen size and resolution, but it's the safest for positioning your type. So we've got the font, the style, regular, bold, bold italic, light, light italic. They are separated between font and style. Font here, style there. We've got our size, and this is anti-aliasing. So when I choose anti-aliasing, we've always had the ability to choose these options at the top of the line. None would show you how it would look without anti-aliasing. Very rough. If I choose sharp, you'll see how that affects the edge. Crisp, strong, and smooth. Smooth is a little bit softer and blends more. New to Photoshop CC is Mac LCD, which is like an iPad or iPhone. So it might be the most predictive for those devices. Or a Mac screen, if you're on the Windows platform, there's a different anti-aliasing technique that you could see on the opposite platform. So I'm going to leave it on Mac LCD to give me the accurate prediction if this were on an Apple device. Now, if I'm not sure what font I want to use, I can select the text, and instead of clicking the arrow to the right where you could see a font in its style, 
I like to experiment, take the actual word, and see all of the fonts on my system. Maybe not one by one. You might want to start with families, but this is good when you're searching for something and you're not sure where you're going to land. So I click in the font name. Usually it's Myriad Pro. That's the default font. And I'll hit my up arrow key to go alphabetically through every font on my system until I land on one that works for this piece. My down arrow will go down alphabetically. My wheel on my mouse will also scroll through the fonts. The wheel can be a little bit faster and you might land on something that you like better by just wheeling up or down. I think I'm going to choose Myriad Pro and I could type MYR and it gets me to Myriad Pro and return or enter will accept that. So we'll choose Myriad Pro regular size 15 and I'm previewing the anti-aliasing of a Mac LCD. Since each product is only going to have one line, it wouldn't really matter if we left aligned or center aligned or right aligned. And if we don't have our colors loaded yet, I can click the foreground color square and type in a recipe like 40, 40, 40, a dark gray, and click OK and it applied that dark gray. Once I'm happy with this, I can go to my Move tool, and that will deselect, and I could load up the color library that I'm going to be using for this client. So I will choose Replace Swatches. And when I replace swatches, in your Chapter 8 folder is the Pluralist Swatches. And now I've got only their corporate identity colors. So if I go to my type tool, T for type, and double click the word products, I could choose their corporate dark gray or their khaki. Actually, it'll tell you the names. This is dark brown, dark khaki, sea green. And I could click off of it. I could also sample colors and it will show the fill color has been changed, but if you don't select the text with a double click, it doesn't actually change the color. So I can click here to choose the darkest gray. I could click here to sample another color with the text selected, or I could click here to sample a new color. In the end, I want to use the pluralist darkest gray. And this has been formatting text in Photoshop.